So back at school, whenever we actually were taught about men like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and all the talents they had, especially Leonardo, was incredible to see and to witness um, how much talent these people had. And obviously you get inspired and you want to be a little bit like them as an artist yourself. However, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how to avoid becoming a Leonardo da Vinci. What's that about? Stay tuned for this episode. Welcome guys, welcome to another episode. I hope you guys had a good week. My name is Harvey Newman. I'm an animation director for a games company called Builder Rocket Boy. And I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel and share some nuggets and knowledge that I have learned over the years. So I've been reading this book called The Da Vinci Curse, a life design for people with too many interests. Um, it's a fascinating book. I highly advise you guys reading it. And the best thing that the book does is basically analyze if Leonardo da Vinci were, were to be born today, um, how would he fare? Because Leonardo was an amazing polymath, right? I mean, he was a painter, that's what everyone knows him for. He was also an architect, he was also a sculptor, an anatomist, and pro an engineer as well. And it's incredible how many talents one person had. Um, and it's easy to think that in order for you to be the best artist possible, especially if you are, have a very curious mind like myself, that you can perhaps be one day like Leonardo da Vinci and be a master of all things, right? Because that is what's so curious about the Renaissance times, right? There was more than one person. They were really good at many things. Now, this book, The Da Vinci Curse, when they analyze uh, Leonardo and how he would actually kind of fare in today's time, basically the short answer is not so well. And the reason why is because people are becoming, or traits are becoming more specific, right? Um, a good example is if you were to actually kind of like um, have a surgery, a heart surgery, for example, you will not choose a GP, a general practitioner to actually have or do your heart surgery. You would actually go to a like a heart surgeon to actually get that surgery done. So society is exp has expanded in such a way that there's a lot of things that you can actually do specifically and you need to be really good at what you do. Now, this fair is really good for animators because one of the things that the book says is that in today's time, you need to actually find one thing, just one thing uh, that you actually are very good at and focus on it. And the reason why is if you want to be like Leonardo da Vinci in today's society, you end up becoming a jack of all trades and a master of none. Because today's society, I believe, especially as the book says, I think is much more uh, geared towards depth instead of knowledge. And this is what people used to have back then. It was knowledge of many things. And therefore, they, you, they would become masters if they were really good at it. But in today's society, what you need is depth in one thing and be really good at this one thing. Now, the book actually mentions that you should select whatever you want to specify in um, following three criteria. Is it fun? Are you any good at it? And can you earn money from it? Those three things are also true for animation. So let me flip things and just tell you why this fits so well within animation. Um, the book specifically says that you need to actually select a trait or a profession that gives you a lifetime of knowledge. So just like Leonardo, you spend the whole life, your whole life learning it and you can never truly master it. Just like Leonardo with painting and, you know, architecture and engineering, all these things. He spent his whole life studying all these things at the same time in order to master it as much as possible. And, you know, truth be told, he became really good at all of them. But in this in today's society, I think you should actually focus on one and animation is an amazing career for you to focus all of your life into mastering it because there's so much for you to learn. It's impossible for you to learn it all. And even if you think you learn it all, you can always be creative with what you learn and actually expand on it and expand the animation medium because there's no bottom to it. It's a creative medium after all, just like painting. 
um, there's no bottom to it. There's always things that you can innovate and build upon and new branches of animation that need to be actually be created, right? I mean, a good example is Spider-Verse. Uh, no one saw that movie coming and when it came out, it was like a shock to the industry. Not only animation, but everybody because you felt so fresh and so unique and no one had seen that in 3D. So this is what I mean about animation never being stale or old or you being able to learn everything from animation. So this is basically what I wanted to say with this video and I hope this actually kind of like rings true with you guys. The fact that animation is one of those trades that if you think those three things, is it fun? Are you any good at it? Can you earn money from it? Uh, if you find that those three are true for animation, for you specifically, then know that you have a lifetime ahead of you of learning animation, becoming good at animation, and perhaps being Leonardo, but just in animation, right? <laughs> becoming really good at what you do, becoming a master of it by the time you are like 80 years old or something like that. And people look up to you, look up to your knowledge, look up to your achievements, because you perhaps actually pushed and innovated animation as you should, right? So I hope this is interesting. I hope this rings true to you guys. Go and check out the book. It's an amazing book, The Da Vinci Curse. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm about to, but I got so excited after reading it and I thought this is so relevant to animation that I had to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Before me leaving, um, I have to give a massive thanks to my Patreons. Um, once again, thank you so much for all your support or monthly support helps a ton to actually kind of keep on building this channel and if you actually want to know more about my patreon if you don't yet then check out my patreon check out the perks um all good stuff there i share extra things over there so hopefully you guys will like it and decide to support me so we can keep on building and if you enjoy this content if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure to actually drop a comment as well and that's it that's all I had for you guys. As always, stay well, stay safe. Peace.